My name is Leila Bumbra and I am the Research Forum Program Manager here at the Courtauld. I'm thrilled to be joined today by members of our cross-institutional decolonizing action groups. These groups, made up of students, volunteers, academics and professional service staff, aim to readdress assumptions around and within cultural knowledge. Who, how and why certain institutions are seen as the bearers of cultural knowledge. Through proactive, inclusive and authentic change, these groups hope to make our sector a more enriching, welcoming and representative place for all. So why here today? Well, we are exploring Peter Doig Etchings for Derek Walcott, an exhibition presenting for the first time a series of 19 etchings by Peter Doig inspired by the work of his friend, the poet Derek Walcott. She loved to say it, and I loved to hear it, paramine. It had the scent of cocoa in it, the crisscrossing trunks of leafy gommiers, straight out of Cezanne and Sicily. The road rose, then fell fast, into the lush valley where my daughters live. The name said by itself could make us laugh, as if some deep, deep secret was hidden there. And I see it through crossing tree trunks, framed with love, and she is gone, but the hill is still there. And when I join her, it will be paramine for both of us and the children, the mountain air, and music with no hint of what the name could mean, rocking gently by itself, paramine, paramine. Can you genuinely claim these? And do they reclaim you from your possible margins of disdain, of occasional escape, the dusk in the orange yards of the shacks, the waxen blue-green of the breadfruit leaves, the first bulb in the kitchens, shape and shadow so familiar, so worn, like the handles of brooms in old women's hands. The small river, the crammed shop and the man outside it, and the stars that nail down their day. In short, this affection for what is simple and known, the direct faces, the deprived but resigned ones whom you have exalted, are they utterly your own as surely as your shadow is a thing of the suns? The sound rushing past the car windows, not the sea but came, the night wind in your eyes like a woman's hair, the fresh fragrances, then the lights on the hills over Port of Spain, the nocturnal intimacies that stroke the flash. Again, the night grows its velvet, the frogs croak behind fences, the dogs bark at ghosts, and certainties settle in the sky, the stars that are no longer questions. Yes. They reclaim you in a way you need not understand. Candles that never gutter and go out in the breeze. Or tears that glint on night's face for every island. Days change, the sunlight goes. Then it returns and verily, under intense mental pain. I remember a corner of brilliant saddle road, climbing out of the valley, of leaf-quiet Santa Cruz, a passage with a bridge, one the desperate memory fastens on, even as it passes all the other possible places. Why this particular one? Perhaps because it disembodies, it neutralizes distance, with the shadows of leaves on the road and the bridge in the sun, proving that it will remain in any of two directions, leaving life and approaching the calm of extinction. With the blissful indifference with which a small stream runs alongside the bridge, and the flagged hills of Paramin, and the certainties they were often of goodness that outweigh our coarse needs and the continuous amen of the brown shallowed river. Because memory is less than the place which it cherishes frames itself from nowhere except to say that even with the shit and the stress of what we do to each other, the running stream's bliss contradicts the self-importance of despair by these glittering simplicities. Water, 
leave, and air that elate the solution which goes beyond happiness. Remember childhood. Remember a faraway rain. Yesterday I wrote a letter and tore it up. Clouds carried bits under the hills, like gulls through the streams of the, of the valley to Port of Spain. Then my eyes began to brim from all the old ills, as I lay face up in bed, muffling the thunder of a clouded heart, while the hills dissolved in ruin. This is how the rain descends into Santa Cruz, with wet cheeks, with the hills holding onto snatches of sunlight. Until they fade, then the far sound of a river and surging grass, the mountains loaded as the clouds that have one bright fish fissure that closes into smoke, and things returning to fable and rumor and the way it was once. It was like this once. This is how the rain descends into Santa Cruz, with wet cheeks, with the hills holding onto snatches of sunlight until they fade. Then the far sound of a river, and surging grass, the mountains loaded as the clouds that have one bright fissure that closes into smoke, and things returning to fable and rumor and the way it was once. It was like this once. Remember the small red berries shaped like a bell, by the road bushes, and the church at the end of innocence, and the sound of La Rivière Dorée through the trees to Chazel, the scent of hog plums that I have never smelled since, the long shadowed emptiness of small rows, when a singed smell rose from the drizzling asphalt. The way rain hazes the chapel of La Divina Pastora, and a life of incredible errors. What is so pertinent to our decolonizing action groups is Walcott's status as a post-colonial poet, really exploring and focusing on location and dislocation through his poetry. In the last years of life, Walcott wrote a suite of poems, each inspired by one of Doig's paintings, and published these as Morning Paramin in 2016. In turn, Doig produced this group of etchings responding to the poems. They cover a range of subjects from a portrait of Walcott painting to Trinidadian and Alpine themes. For Doig, printmaking is an integral part of his artistic life. His prints and his paintings often work in dialogue with one another. And in this exhibition, we were hoping that in showcasing Doig's vital aspect of his practice, and um, his etchings, visitors would be able to explore the full span of Doig's creative process. And from the other point of view, the decolonizing action groups, we are hoping that in hearing the poems read by members of these groups, we hope you can immerse yourself in both the artworks visual and written, and consider the artistic decolonial drive behind them.